In this video, we're going to look at data flow diagrams. Now, a data flow diagram is essentially a diagram that shows how data flows um, within a particular system or a process um, that might be carried out within a business, for example. So here's an example question, and I'm going to show you how I personally would break it down in an exam and how I would answer it and the process that I would go through. Okay, so the first thing that you'd need to do is you need to read the question and understand it. So maybe read the question and put yourself in that scenario. I usually find helps. Um, and in this particular example, you need to identify three things. The first thing you need to identify is any entities. Okay, so entities are like people or departments. Okay, within a business or a process. The next thing you'd need to identify are the processes within the question. Okay, so like some, when something is happening. Okay, and then you would need to identify where any data is being stored. Okay, so what I would do next is I would read the question and I would highlight off in the question where these three things are. Ah, so if we go through the question together, it starts off by saying a customer orders some clothes from KLJ, which is an online store using the store's website. So I can see here on that first line, you have customer, which is an entity, because it's a person or a department. Now, also in that first line, we have a process just here. Okay, as the customer is ordering some clothes from the website, Customer is doing something, okay. Process is occurring, so there we have two things on the first line. So, next it says he has ordered from the store before, so his details, including debit card details, are already on the customer file in KLJ system. Now, the customer file is a date store, it's where something is being saved, okay. So, I'll put DS there, so that is a data store. Now, presuming that is an electronic data store. Next, the order is placed on an order file. So again, that straight away, we've got a data store. An electronic receipt is sent to the customer's email address. The shipping department, so the shipping department is an entity, receives notification of the transaction and the customer's details. They pack and ship the goods and update the stock file to show revised quantities in stock. So packing and shipping the goods would be a department doing something. Okay, so like fulfilling the order for the customer. So here um, we have a process and here the stock file is another data store. Okay, so what I've done there is I ident I've identified all the entities, processes and the data stores. So the next thing for us to do is to start to actually draw the diagram itself, okay, using the things that I've highlighted here, okay. Now I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts to this data flow diagram based on what I've highlighted from the question here, and that's a really good starting point. So if I go to a blank canvas here, okay. Now, first, so this is going to be my blank canvas, this is where I'm going to draw the answer. So if I go back to the question really quickly, I'm going to look at that first line. It says the customer orders some clothes from the KLG, an online store using the store's website. Okay, and in here I've got the first entity, which is the customer, and I've got the first process, which is the ordering of the clothes. So I'm going to put those two into my diagram first. Okay, so. I am going to draw, um, and I'm excuse the poor drawing here, um, but I'm going to start off with this entity here, and this is for the customer. Okay, now an entity is the oval shape, and I know that's a really poor oval, but this is the oval shape. Okay, then they are ordering some clothes from the KLG website, so that is the process. Okay, so I'll need to put that into my diagram as well. Now, 
process is like a rounded rectangle. So if I put a rectangle in, okay. Now I usually put a line at the top, okay, because you can include a number in that top section, which shows the order of the processes. So this will be the first process happening. Okay, so let's label this up, process order. Okay, now in a data flow diagram, it's not a data flow diagram unless you actually connect those shapes together and label them with the data that is flowing between them. Okay, so we're going to label this up and connect them together. So you essentially on this line write down what the customer is doing when they are ordering. Okay, so they would probably be ordering their items and maybe the quantity of what they want. Okay. And also they might have to put in their card details. Okay. Let's go back to the question. The next part says he has ordered from site from the store before. So his details, including debit card details, are already in the customer file in the KLJ system. So we need to create this data store here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will create the shape of a data store. Now the data store shape looks a bit like this. Okay, it's like a rectangle with a missing side. And we have another section where we can label up with a number. Now I put a number one there and a D before it. Okay, now the D represents a digital store. So it's probably saved on the computer. Okay, if it's had an M in there, that would be a manual store. So that might be doing it on paper, for example, putting it in a filing cabinet. All right, so if the person's doing it themselves. But a computer's doing this automatically. So that's why I put a D for digital, and it's the first data store that's happening in this particular scenario. Okay, so we need to connect the shapes together. So if we go back to the question, okay. Um, so he's obviously ordering from the website and the details are already on the customer file okay so we're going to connect these two together because when he's placing the order it could be looking in the data store for his details okay and it could also be retrieving his card details from the data store okay so we could label this up with um, the card details again. Okay. And you could label it up with any other information you think might be being sent to the data store or retrieved from the data store. Okay. Let's make sure I label this up as customer file. Because in the question, it is called the customer file data store. All right. Um, now, typically, if it's retrieving any information from the customer file database, like it says in the question, because apparently his details are already stored, you could label it with other things that might be stored in that file, such as his address. Okay. And his name. Okay. So these are things that might already be stored on their database. So now I'll go back to the question. So I'll say I've covered these two points, okay, at the moment. So now I'm up to the, up to this section here. So the order is placed on an order file. So I need to obviously create another data store for the order file, okay? So let's go back to our diagram. I've got another data store here. So let's pull this in. And this is our second data store and it's 
again, assuming it's a digital, and we'll label it up with an order file. Now, it says the order is placed on the order file. So again, this process in the middle of where we're actually placing our orders, we'll use from here to the order file, like this. Okay, and again on this label, this line here, this data flow line, we would need to write basically what is being sent to the order file. Okay, so again, it's going to be the order details, isn't it? Okay, such as things as um, name, date items, um, cost, etc. Okay. Now, I know these aren't in the question. Okay, these things I'm writing here, but you've just got to imagine what, what details and data do you think would be being sent to the order file or retrieved from the different um, data stores. Okay. So let's go back to the question. Okay, so we've done this. All right, so let's highlight this off. So now it's an electronic receipt is sent to the customer's email address. All right. So we'll highlight this off because we're going to put this in. So an electronic receipt is sent to the customer's email address. So something's going back to the customer now from the order file. Okay. So if we go here. Well, from the, the process, the, the order process, sorry. So, back to the customer. Is a receipt. Make sure I spell receipt correctly. Okay, so a receipt is being sent back to the customer. All right. Next is the shipping department receives notification of the transaction and the customer details. So I need to create another entity for the shipping department. So we need to draw another oval. That's slightly better that one. So let's label it up. Like that. Well, the shipping department receives notification of the transaction and the customer details. So again, this is all coming from the process of the order, isn't it? Okay. So if we move, draw the arrow in that direction because the data that's going from the processing the order to the shipping department being sent to the shipping department is obviously going to be, like it says, the customer details. And the order information. Okay. Now, they pack and ship the goods and update the stock file show revised quantities in stock. So they pack and ship the goods. We've got another process there. So the shipping department is going to pack and ship the goods. So I'll draw another process. Okay, and I'll label that with number two, because that's my second process. And We'll call this, you can either call it packing and shipping, or I think the technical term is order fulfillment. Okay. And it's from the shipping department. So the, the process that the shipping department are carrying out is packing the order, so getting the items together, getting the quantity, correct and I would say whether it's been to a shipped or not. Okay. 
So I'll go get the items, the quantity of the items. Okay. So they packed and shipped the goods, which is what I've just done now with the process, and they will update the stock file to show revised quantities in stock. So after they've done the um, order fulfillment, um, we need to draw in another stock file. So this will be the third one in this diagram. I'll put a D again because it's a digital one, I'm assuming. And obviously that's coming from that process. It's something that happens within that process or after that process. And this is called a stock file. And um, we update stock. Okay. So let's go back to the question and highlight that off. Now I'm happy there going through it in that order and doing it in that particular way that I've covered everything that I feel that this data flow diagram needs to cover. Okay.